Hello, everybody. Yes, so thank you for your, for your time. Um, I'll dive straight into this. So uh, we are a company that make apps for schools, uh, charities, clubs, NHS, and other organizations. And we try and uh, collect information as to how people use apps and design them to be most effective in communications of all sorts, one of which is safety. Um, in the NHS patient survey, they mentioned these, there were these two sort of headline um, points they made, as to which, is, which, are, which are vital. Uh, maximizing the things that go wrong, sorry, go right, and minimizing the things that go wrong, and a continuous improvement culture. Um, and I'll try to illustrate uh, from our experience of making apps for the NHS, for both patients, apps for patients and their families and carers, and also apps for internal communications as to how those two things can be, uh, can be achieved or be enhanced. Uh, this is something, just to, by background, this is some examples of the types of apps that we make. Um, starting from the left, there's a patient app which East Lancashire Trust uses for its paediatric diabetes uh, patients. Um, it tells them all they need to know that previously would have been communicated by, by paper, email, website, and so on. Uh, the green one is an app from the STP, uh, Black Country in West Birmingham, for uh, one of their strategic priorities, which is GP Forward View. There they have to communicate with about 700 GPs in the region uh, inform them about um, priorities, strategy, training, resources, what have you. Um, and also they want to try and retain as many GPs as possible, as possible by, by providing good service to them. So they use the app for that. Uh, the middle app is another patient app for uh, maternity uh, department at Morecambe Bay. The red one is an app for COPD, another patient app. Th this app is, is, is less downloaded by patients themselves because the demographic is quite old but it is, it's, instead it's downloaded by family members and carers. Uh, so it, it, you, you basically get to the patient that way. And the last one is an internal um, communications app, which I'll show you a bit of later in the presentation um, from the University Hospitals of Birmingham, their policies and procedures. Um, what all these apps have in common is that you can, you can get on them all the information you can see there on the left-hand side of the slide. So anything you can put in, into an email, um, or in a leaflet, or on a website, or social media, or wherever. You can get it on an app these days. Um, and on the right-hand side, this shows you that, um, you, well, sorry, you can also uh, use notifications to flag up push notifications to alert people to new items, updates, new guidelines, and so on. Um, and also achieve, uh, it's basically a more effective feedback channel than you can, than you can achieve uh, by other methods as well. Um, the app is also customizable, the design. You saw some examples on the previous one, and these are another two here. This is Edinburgh um, Diabetes and Mid Yorkshire uh, Epilepsy. So the design is customizable to make it re relevant for your organization. Uh, the feedback from, from clinicians essentially is it's a, a very good way, an app is a good way to get um, broad coverage of all, their, of all your patient base. Um, patient feedback suggests they like it. I think really. These days, everyone's got a phone. Everyone's got a phone. So communicating with them via that method is something which they're familiar with and, and they like. Um, when, when you ask people what, what are the benefits that they see of an app, uh, using an app for communications, then they'll generally point to these things, the, the patients on the left-hand side there. What it amounts to is it makes their life easier. Everything's in one place. They can see it easily, the information from you, that is. And on the right-hand side, from the service po uh, provider point of view, um, it gives a bit, they're happy that it gives a better patient, patient experience, um, and it saves uh, time in, it's definitely inside the organization, and hopefully cost as well, depending on how much paper you use today. So on the subject of safety, um, how, can, how can better communications help safety? Uh, I'll try and give some examples. So um, these bullet points really are the key things about information which a patient uh, or an internal staff member would have on an app provided by you. Firstly, the information on it is authoritative. Uh, the way that you get information on an app is that, is that you uh, appoint uh, administrators within your organization to a, uh, to a, to a system, uh, sorry, to a website which has got a login on it. You enter the data on there and it publishes it to the app in, in real time. So you're responsible for all the content on, on these apps that we make. Um, that means that all the information you put on there comes directly from you to them whether it's you to your internal staff or you to your patients. So they don't have to Google around the place or search for information from elsewhere if you can make the information on the app as comprehensive as possible for them. Um, secondly, it's immediately accessible. So um, safety-wise, they don't have to hunt around for it in, on websites or uh, through previous emails or something. It's right there and then on the face of their phone in an app. Uh, thirdly, um, 
for self-management purposes, it, it's, it, it's very helpful. It, obviously, the more they can do for themselves, the more that you can show them how to do things themselves, the better. And that tends to be a very visual thing. You can put videos on there, pictures and so on, as many as you want. Um, you can link out to, to good websites you found elsewhere to, to give it illustrations and examples how they, how they can, uh, can self-manage themselves better. And so hopefully this leads to uh, lower um, emissions um, and uh, delayed onset of conditions or, or events. Um, consistency of care. The more consistent you make the information across all your people, the more consistent the care is likely to be. Um, and so if you have one set of information on, on an app, then it's going to be more consistent. Uh, and lastly, um, you can use notifications to update people to, to new things. So if you think of uh, policies and procedures, for instance, um, at the moment they may well be on intranet or internet or something accessible to people, uh, but when there's an update or a change of dosage recommendation, change of this or that, um, then you need somehow to alert people to that and get them to go and read it. It's quite difficult if, if that's a sort of two or three step process of sending them an email, please log on to this, look at the change, blah, blah, blah. Easier if you send them an app, with everything, everything pings, pings up on their app and it's all there in one place. So the, the types of apps that we see um, demand for from the NHS for patients, patient apps right now, are for long-term conditions, things like diabetes, epilepsy, cystic fibrosis, where there's a lot of, uh, well, a lifetime of, uh, and daily management required of the condition. Um, so having an app to there to support uh, people in doing that is, is very helpful. Um, care and support app, so a sort of shorter term version of that. So imagine you were to have a hip operation. It's a sort of three or six month process for you um, of intense interest for you at the time. So before the process, what do I need to know? What's going to happen to me during and then after? What's the, what's the rehab? Again, you can get all that on an app and a nice easy way for them to, to digest. And, you don't have to, and then they don't have to go off and search for information else from elsewhere, which may be uh, misleading or confusing. Um, and, and they've also got on the app a set of contact details to get in touch if, if they struggle or if they need, if they need that. Um, the third type of app is a public health app, um, where uh, really this is about social care. So there's a lot of, if you, rec if you need to signpost people to local resources and so on, an app can be very useful for that. Um, when it comes to apps for staff, the safety implications, I think, are, are, are actually the reasons for safety being enhanced by, uh, by better communication are eff effectively the same as for the patients. So authoritative information would be the same. Um, it's immediately accessible. Um, instead of having to log on to, an in to the internet or something, it's there on their device when they're out and about or in the wards. Um, uh, consistent information, again, the more consistent you can make the information, the more consistent the care is likely to be. Uh, and you can, you can alert them to new things. So the types of app we see here, the types of app we're seeing demand for at the moment from NHS for internal communications purposes are things where the, 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 the service or department needs to coordinate across a wide range of people. For instance, STP or CCG level, um, you've got a region or an area or, or indeed a whole hospital trust um, and uh, the people are dispersed. So really at the moment, email is probably the best way to get hold of everybody, except that that gets a bit lost. If you can have one app with everything in one place, people can quickly get it and refer back to it. Um, compliance. Um, this is uh, definitely becoming more and more and more of an, more and more of an issue. Um, so the, I'd say the advantages of an app for this are that if you publish your information on that, then you know that the, um, when people access it, then they'll always be, always be viewing the latest version or the latest um, information about the given topic they're looking at, because they're looking at, you update it in real time. Um, it's very easily accessible on their phone, so they're going to look at it more frequently than if it's a pain to try and find it, that information. Um, and using an app, you should be able to track um, usage of the app. So you'll be, see, you'll be able to see, for instance, who has downloaded the new policy, who has looked at it. They can, you can ask them to verify on the app they've done that and record it and so on. So it creates a, creates a nice audit trail around the whole process of compliance. And lastly, training. Um, so because uh, people come for training, they go away, three months' time, they want to refresh themselves about what it, what it actually involves. Again, if on the app you've got a series of videos and, um, and description, easy for them to do that. Um, updating them. And for new team members, the example here would be in the emergency room, you've got 30 or 40 new juniors coming cycling through every six months on a training program or something. Nice to have an app for them. Send them the app in advance before they actually join. It's got your 10 most common procedures on there how to insert a main line or something, the 15-step the, the, uh, the process, how we do it in, in, in our trust. Um, 
so that when they are, so they can prep beforehand before they arrive, and when they get there, again, there's a sort of ready-made source of um, useful training information, if you like, or useful understanding they, they can get as to how the process works. The process works in your, in your trust as opposed to the trust next door, which might have a different process. Um, I'm hoping that uh, this is a video, so I'm not sure. Oh, perfect. Yeah, thank you. This is a couple of, is a couple of examples of patient apps. Morgan Bay Maternity app, uh, if this starts playing. Um, give you some idea. This is the, so beforehand what they need to know, where, where can I give birth in the region. Um, other data on here, useful information. Here's an example. People need to inject themselves at home. It's quite difficult for a random person. How do I do that in different languages? Um, during the birth, you need to know a certain amount of information. That's all here. After the birth, you need another set of information. That's coming up now. So all the things which you would have put on leaflets, documents, booklets, websites, somewhere, it's all here. It's, it's, it's in your branded wrapper entity, if you like, the zone. You can get loads and loads of information on an app. Um, that was a PDF document. I think you can put the vast ones of those on. Calendar of events, contacts details, feedback surveys, and so on. I think we run through one or two more of these, some contacts. In a minute, you'll see a diabetes app uh, where they, um, you'll see this, it's the same sort of page formatting, but they just, because it's diabetes content, you'll see it's about diabetes. So to the person with diabetes that would appear as being relevant for them, this is a news, uh, news um, function, a good news story about a child with diabetes in the area. Instead of having to carry around a vast PDF, PDF document for their pump, they, they've got it on the phone, nice and easy, easy to access. The sick day rules, emergency information, all that stuff you can put on the, on the app. I think we're, okay, videos and so on. Oh yes, uh, sorry. There's a, there's a huge amount of um, sort of background information which 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 are provided for patients on, on lifestyle, so travel, diet, exercise, um, drinking, all, all these other factors and so on. So all that stuff which is probably in leaflets today, you can put it all in, all in all on an app, and you can also notify people to it again when you have new advice and so on to come along. Um, so that was an example of a patient app. Um, here is an example of a. Uh, of an app for internal guidelines. So in this case, um, this trust had a, a one PDF with 150 uh, doc PDF, well, 150 policies in it, like this, on an intranet, which was not very accessible to their people. Uh, so you put it on an app, you split it up, put it on an app. So then the, you can see it on their, on their devices as they're walking around, either on the ward iPad or on their personal phone, as you choose to let them, um, and they can simply consult when required. This is obviously much, much less visual than the previous app. This is one that's aimed for the professionals. The previous one was aimed at uh, the public. So the, you know, but you, you can add all that same stuff to this if, if you have it and if you want to. So those are, two, those are some quick examples of how you can use an app. And um, so just to summarize the whole thing. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong slide. Um, uh, it, 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 the, the more you can improve it, the more you can enhance communications and make them consistent. Uh, um, and allow everybody to access them very, very easily, um, then the, the, the higher the chance that these two things come right here. The first, you maximize the, the, the good things, uh, and secondly, you can get continuous improvement culture going, particularly with the feedback facilities that you have on an app. You can then, for, you know, it becomes an iterative process. You, you publish stuff, ask people on it, what's missing, what's good, what's bad, change it up, make it better and better, better over time. That was all I had to say. Uh, there's about three or four minutes. If anybody would like to ask any questions now, very welcome. Otherwise, one will stand back there at the, uh, in the hall. Any, any questions now? Any quick ones now? Okay. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for your time.